Okay, Daryl says remove shopping, entertainment, and eating out at minimum. If they are not consistently going to the gym three to five days out of the week, temporarily, what, take that membership out, is that what you're saying? Okay, cool, so that was three things. So if we take out shopping and eating and the gym, that is $201 back into our economy. So I'm still negative $1,100, right? But it's better than 13. Daryl says, I'm assuming they are no longer contributing to their savings, correct, but are only withdrawing from the savings, correct. That's how they're getting by right now. Savings, and they pretty much are nearly maxing out the uh, the credit cards as well. So they have been pulling from the credit cards to, to help. Do they have any bills that will be ending soon? Is this person a parent? That is a, yes, so we're dealing with a mom. They, they do have daycare. Um, so there aren't any bills ending as of right now, that will increase our cash flow. So that is not the case. Okay, Tilo says cancel subscription, put the gym on hold, reduce eating out. Okay, great. So you guys are focusing on those optional bills. That's good. That's good. Possibly pay off one credit card to increase cash flow and transfer one to two other credit cards to the 0% to lower the monthly payments. We're getting somewhere, Daryl. I like it. This is why you're going to be a great financial coach. Caleb says pause the tithing to the church. I agree with this. I agree with this. This is gonna, this is gonna, uh, this is gonna, it's gonna feel a little weird for the faith people in the room here. Like, wait a minute, is he telling people not to tithe? Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. I am saying that. Here's why. You may be able to tithe for a period of time in negative cash flow position. Eventually, you're either going to reduce that tithe. Eventually, you're gonna resent the tithe and giving that you're doing to the church. And eventually, you will not be able to give because you haven't fixed the foundation. To be effective in giving, one must have production. In order to give, one must be fruitful. In order to pour into someone's cup, one must have liquid access to resources to pour into another. Do we get that? That is a principle. I cannot give what I don't have. I can't. I can't give what I don't have. That's a principle. So if you're giving to your church and your negative cash flow, where are you giving from? OPM. You're using other people's money to give a percentage based off your income to God. And God's like, wait a minute. Could that be interpreted as stealing? Oh dear. Yeah. Think about it. If you got a farm, and I got a farm and we're neighbors and your farm was fruitful in a particular season and my farm was not. It did not produce any fruit. And it's time to now give first fruits to Christ, to God. But I didn't produce any fruit. And I'm under this spell illusion by my pastor and my people around me that I, I have to give. It's the law and all this stuff. But my, but my farm did not produce anything. But my neighbor produced so let me pick from his tree. Let me take from his tree, his farm, or let me let me borrow. Cause stealing is, you know, taking is 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 a little bit, you know, that's like a double sin, right? So instead of instead of taking and stealing from my neighbor, let me just ask my neighbor for some money and some fruit. And I'm gonna take that fruit, I'm gonna feed myself, and then I'm gonna give a portion of that to God. What are we doing, folks? Are we what are we doing? Is this why so many Christians are broke out of their mind and stuck because of what people around you are doing? What about this? Here's an idea. Hey, Father in heaven, speak to me. I come to you. My farm, my household economy is not producing. I'm running a negative. I owe you everything, Father in, in heaven. You own everything. I owe you everything. So here's what I want to do. Here's my plea. I owe you this, Father, 10%. Let's say that's the number you're using on a monthly basis based off your income. But I'm not able to give that right now. By redirecting what I would give to you, Father, I'm gonna put that into paying off the debtors in my life, to paying off the, the institutions I owe money to. The lenders, I mean, not the debtors, the lenders, okay? So, Father in heaven, almighty, supreme beating, you don't need my money. I know you don't need my money. This is a matter of faith. You're not gonna lose sleep if I don't give. We're just being real here. We're talking conversating. Let's figure this out. So you're praying, having a conversation with the father and you're saying, I'm going to redirect this to pay off these lenders, these institutions. And what I don't pay you now in this season, I will pay back when my house eventually, my farm eventually produces that harvest in excess. So if I'm given $304.24 a month, and let's say it takes us a year 
to get into a positive cash flow position, well, what can we do? We can take that 304.24 and times it by 12, and we can keep track of the months that I did not give. We can just keep track of it, right? And then when I finally get into a positive cash flow position, then I can begin to give to the father, give back what I owe, and then some, because it was a 10% in 2023 and then 10% in 2024. So you're doing a makeup contribution back to the father, back to the church. Could that be a potential solution? I don't know. Pray on it. Let me know. There's some scriptures that can back me up on this in situations where, where in agricultural times when they did not produce in that season, it was nothing to give. And then when the next season came along and then there was fruit, they gave based on last year what they would have produced and plus this year that's a possibility so i like caleb being bold say pause the tithing to the church harrison says eliminate the optional items except tithing totally get it listen i get it i get it because we've been taught right in the church that if you you know you stop tithing you're gonna you're gonna cancel your blessings God's not going to help you. I know people have been told this. I know it. When you stop the tithe, you're not trusting in God anymore. You're not relying on him in faith. But yet, there's another scripture that says that if you don't leave an inheritance for your children's children, you are worse than a non-believer and an infidel, and you've denied the faith. Whoa, what's that about? And it talks about the provider, man or woman, in a household, providing for your family. Take care of them. You got to get your house in order. So I get it. I get it. When people say, no, 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 don't cut the tithe, don't cut the tithe. Whatever you do, don't cut the tithe. But let's break the math down. They can't tithe. They're taking from OPM. Y'all get that? When you're in a negative cash flow and you're giving to the church, you're not giving to the church. You took OPM, other people's money, you borrowed. It wasn't your production. It wasn't your first fruit. What are you doing? So that's, that's where I'm like, hey, <laughs> Let's run these numbers real quick. Could they pick up another part-time job? Could be, could be. That's another option. I like that. But the thing is, um, in, in this particular case, instead of doing a part-time job, they're actually replacing their full-time job with another full-time job that's going to increase their income by upwards of 25%. But that is a good thought too, um, Miss D. Good thought. Carrie says, put the optional payments onto the credit card with no balance. Pay off the minimum payments so that you can save cash. Once you have a cash cushion, start slowly paying off debt with the cash flow. Well, let's run that, Carrie. So you're saying, let's let's run that. Let's see what, what Carrie's saying because for me, that's I'm confused about something there. So what you're saying, Carrie, is take this 100 plus the 50 plus the 5165 plus the 51 plus the 30424, right? So that's 500 Fifty-six dollars and eighty-nine cents. So, Carrie, you're saying put the optional payments onto that credit card. It's going to be at zero percent with no balance. And then you say pay off the minimum payments so that you can save the cash. So you're saying pay the minimum monthly payment on five fifty-six eighty-nine per month every month moving forward. Uh, let's do. It's probably going to be say like one point five percent of the balance. So it'll probably be more than that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it'll probably be like a twenty-five dollar payment. That's usually what credit card companies do there's usually a minimum it's not gonna be that low of a payment so you're saying that it'll probably be like somewhere around that minimum payment so what happened is we took five five six eight nine and then say minus the monthly payment so we're netting 526.89 a month so you do 526.89 minus 1332.37 right that's what you're saying to do uh and you're saying to save the cash save the cash once you have a cash cushion start slowly paying off debt with the cash flow. Problem is, I'm still negative, right? So 1,33237 minus 556.89. So we're still negative $775.48. They're either gonna have to pull 775.48 from where? The same credit card or savings in your strategy. So we're we still, we're not gonna be able to create a, a cushion, right? Cause I'm still negative 775.48, but that's still good. I mean, it's still better then nothing. So I'm not saying you're wrong. There's definitely more that we're going to need to do, or maybe there's another way of doing it. But even if we just did what Carrie said, we're still in a better position than before, than before. And we're basically buying time to get that job, to be making more money. Roxanne said, I wouldn't eliminate tithing, but maybe temporarily decrease. Cool. That works too. Either that or cancel optional spending to save cash flow. I do like that a little bit more than putting that on the credit card. Tilo says it's easier to reduce expenses and possibly do a balance transfer. 
for 0%. Instead of tithe, invest into the stock market or pay bills, all right? So this is something that we're told, Carrie, right? This is what we're told. Instead of tithing, all right, instead of giving, instead of paying off debt, invest into the stock market, all right? And what's funny about that is, again, going back to not having a clear foundation. This is just a question. Does it make sense for me to release the little money I do have in my economy? They don't even have money, right? In this situation, they don't have money. They're negative cash flow. They don't have money. Does it make sense for me to invest in a stock market of which I have no knowledge of and hope and pray for a rate of return? That's essentially what I'm doing. I don't know what the tax implication will be. I don't know what the fees are. I don't know what the rate of return will be, let alone the internal rate of return. And I am exposing the little money I do have to potential losses. I want you guys to think about this. People like me in suits, financial advisors, right? Even though I'm not an advisor, but I'm just putting myself in that, in that batch there of financial gurus and influencers and they're always telling you to do something with your money and put it over here and put it over there very few very few are saying invest in the s and me 500 most are just telling you to invest in the s and p 500 again this goes back to my point can we invest in the s and me 500 think about that that is a paradigm shift think about it pause my tithing and it hurt but god is not the author of confusion i can't give from a cup with large holes in it Ooh, roxanne said good point Ooh, they're all said in such a way that i was like yeah you know i feel that i feel that emily says could also give time or talent to make up for the reducing of the tithing that makes sense wow yes and zell also asked the father yep you said pause all optional expenses freeze up the 556 89 in extra cash flow pay off capital one card with her savings okay she is now has extra thousand take two thousand pay down chase let's run that let's run that right let's see so so if we pause all optional expenses that's 556 89 right then Daryl says to pay off Capital One with her savings and take 2000 and pay off a pay down Navy Fed. So 8,610, minus 4,662, 83. We'll have, we'll have 3,947.33 left. So if we pay that, now we got 465.42. And then he said, just take two grand instead of paying it all off, which let's just, I'll just add to it. Cause I said, why not, why not just pay it off? Instead of 2000, so I can get the 52, pay the whole thing off. So minus 2,418.36. So now that's 1,528.97. We were negative 1,332.37. So we'll have a positive 19660 in cash flow. All right. You had said she is now, she now has extra 102231. Right. And that was just paying off capital and then cutting all expenses. So when you minus the gain from the negative, when it's all said and done, we're at a positive 19660. And we still have some money left over in savings, right? So it was 801616 minus 4,662.83 minus 2,418.36. All right, so we still have $1,528.97 in savings if we do what Daryl says, right? If we do what Daryl says. And what's even cooler is we did, with what Daryl said, we didn't even use the, the credit card, didn't use the credit card, but this assumes this assumes that we cut all optional. This is not an easy thing to do, right? This is not easy. This is going to hurt. But if client is willing, then they can see a positive cash flow within 30 days immediately. And then they can take that 196.60 and apply it towards the vehicle to start paying that down. Now, if that's the case, the next step I would do, if I did this, all right, if I'm if I'm this client with this numbers and I followed what Daryl said, then with with a slight velocity banking move, I could also just move 5.69 into 0%, get the 427.43 cash flow, right? Pay the 5% fee that it costs to move that, throw it in there, and that's an additional cash flow gain. Pay the monthly minimum payment on that credit card and then direct my attention to Chase, right? So I'll have 
427.43 minus the monthly minimum payment in here plus 196.60 going into here. So it'd be 427 plus 430 plus 196.60 minus whatever that monthly payment is on the card, right? So if I did that, that'd be 7901, 12 times 5%. So that's 395.05, 395.05 plus 7901.12. So we would owe 8,000. 296 in this 0% credit card times 1% of the balance. Monthly payment is $82.96. So they saved 427.43 minus 82.96. So they'll net 344.47 cash flow plus 196.60. So they go to 54107. 54107 on top of 430 monthly payment on chase right so 54107 plus 430 they would have 971 dollars and seven whoa whoa it's a good move daryl see that that's a solid move my friend mr burnett look at that this is why you're going to be a great financial coach one day when you when you step into that and you start creating content you start educating folks. What a move. You just took them from negative 1,332.37 to positive 971.07 without increasing income. That is powerful. You see, folks, for those of you who are running a negative cash flow, when you when you work on the foundation, we did not do any velocity banking here. Barely. Can you imagine when we eventually do throw velocity banking on this thing? It's like, you know, we go fast. But look at that. Went from a negative to a positive. This is, we're talking 30 day window here. But what do they have to do to make that happen? They gotta cut this. They really have to cut that. So that was one, that's one option. One option, one option, one option. I'm gonna share with you what the client and I discussed that involved not removing any optional bills and what that would look like. So we ran that. We also talked about reducing expenses a little bit, but we also talked about could we have the could we extend the time as long as possible before you transition to that new position? Now, here's the difference of what I'm going to share. What I'm sharing is making a bet. It's a bit of a risk. She may not get that increase in pay. She may get she may not she may not get that. So what so Daryl what you did is you created a guaranteed solution whether she gets the increase in her job or not. You literally just showed her how to spend less than what she makes based on what she makes today, not a not future money. So what what Daryl just presented to us, I would argue is the best guaranteed option for improving this client's foundation to basically hit the reset button on all the optional bills that we have, use the savings that we have on hand to eliminate some debt, get a guaranteed cash flow recovery and a guaranteed interest savings. So she used her savings to save more money. That's what happened. And then I added, right? Cause without even doing what I said to add, we're at, we're at a positive $196.60 in cash flow. And if adding what I said brings, we rotate the, the car and do a balance transfer, pay off the car in full, stick it in the credit card, pay the 5% fee, get the 427. And now you got $971.07 that is going towards the next debt. So we eliminate three debts in a, in a span of 30 days, right? And then we're focusing on paying off that one debt, which is the Chase credit card right? The Chase credit card. Once that's, once that's done, by the time that's done, this card will be due, right? And by the time that card expires, we will probably have a line of credit by then where we can move that balance into another thing and then get the cash flow on that, which would be the 80 bucks. So this is guaranteed success.